exercise 19. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at some of the sheet metal functionality built into SOLIDWORKS, some more advanced topics in this case. We could see that we have a computer case. We're going to be given our, the shell, actually not the shell, but the uh, internal components, and we're going to have to build the shell around it. And so this will go through some of the new tools that are, or some of the tools that are in SOLIDWORKS for sheet metal design. So let's begin by going to File Open and find your flash drive with your CAD 121 folder, Sample Files, and go to Exercise 19. You'll find the Exercise 19 assembly. Open that up. If you get a little message, just hit Don't Ask Me Again and hit OK. All right, now what we need to do actually is you can see the, the model and the intent of what we're going to build here is this outer enclosure. So you could go ahead and right click on that outer enclosure and just hide it. We're going to build our own cover. So go to under insert components, go to new part, and select the front plane to drop it in at in the feature tree. Front plane just so happens to be aligned with that plastic front face. We're going to go ahead and do a file save as to rename this to something else. Just go ahead and hit OK. And I want to call it the E19 cover and hit save. Now, what we're going to do is steal the outer edges of this face to use. So go ahead and zoom up here. We're still in a sketch that's active. We see the little arrow there. We're in good shape. So select this face and hit Convert Entities. And what it should have done is actually projected those onto the same face. With that, zoom out and go to the bottom section, zoom back up, and click on this little line segment at the bottom and delete it. Because we don't want it to go all the way around. It's going to be open at the base. But we're going to put in little segments so that we can put a hem in afterwards. So these should just be both 0.4. If you want to, you can make them symmetric if you drew a center line. This was just easier to add it here. Now once you have that there, let's bring up the sheet metal tools. Right click on any of the tabs. Find sheet metal. And the sheet metal tab should appear. And you'll find base flange. Go ahead and click on base flange. That gives us a directional arrow which we could pull out and actually to create our geometry. But what we want to do is we actually want to stop like right at this vertex here. So it's even with that face. Another thing to note before we go any further, you'll see that the thickness is actually on the outside. So over on the left here, we're going to go ahead and specify some different things. For example, the sheet metal parameters. Now for the, um, the the thickness, we're going to go with 0.06 and reverse the direction so it's on the inside. The K factor will be 0.32. And then the auto relief will leave as rectangular. Now if we rotate to the back side or actually hit our space bar and go to back, just verify that the sheet metal is wrapping around there. In fact, let me verify that that's the right thickness, because that looks like there's a lot of play in there. Oh, that's right, 0.6. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and hit the green check mark. Now, to get rid of some of this faceting, that's a performance issue. It's not necessarily truly like that. But you could always go to the Tools Options and go to Performance. And down below here, you'll see go to image quality. Just drag this, um, actually turn on optimize edge length and apply all referenced part documents. Drag this closer to the right. See how this is going to improve the quality. So don't drag it into the red area. It might slow down your graphics card too much. If it does slow down your graphics card, always scale it back to low. But I'm going to keep it up higher. I have a pretty decent graphics card. And see, you can see how that smoothed out then geometry a little bit there. 
Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in um, a miter. Now for the miter tool, we just want flanges that will extend out here and have the bolt holes in them. So, to start this off, here's a little trick. Go up to the bottom left hand corner of this part. Select this edge near the end point, but not on the end point. So right about where my pointer is right now. I'm going to click. And then go to sketch. And start a new sketch. Notice what it does here. It actually creates a new plane perpendicular to that geometry. This will enable us to actually create a flange that comes off of here. We're drawing the profile. So select the line tool, rotate this around, and get up to that vertex. When you get the vertex, drag this out approximately 0.5, and make sure you get the little square to the right of your pointer indicating that it's horizontal. Go to Smart Dimension, and dimension it at 0.5. That should be long enough to cover as the flange. Now if we go back to Sheet Metal, we can now go to Miter Flange. It will take that and extend it out. Now, the problem here is that it's intersecting the model. So we need to adjust the flange position on the left here to material outside. And now it's actually on the out. You do have the ability to bend outside as well and extend, put a little more flexibility in there, tolerance. But we'll just go with bend the material outside. Also, as far as the gap distance goes, um, that plays a role once we start having it carry all the way around. And right now we don't see that happen. That's because you have to click on this little button here that should appear for propagate. And then you should see it carry all the way around the edge. The gap distance that it's talking about is at the miter corners. That gap that shows up right there. You can adjust it, making it larger. Or smaller, depending upon your needs. I'll set mine to point two. Also, you'll see that this carried around to that little flat. We don't really want that there, so what you can do is go on the list here and click on the, probably one of the last edges because it carried around, so edge nine. And you can right click on that and delete it. And that should do it. Just go ahead and hit the green check mark. So now you can see the flanges on there. Now what we can do is we could go ahead and select this face, start a sketch, and go normal too. What I would do at this point normally is wire, go to wireframe. It'll make it easier to see the holes for the screws that are going to go in here in a minute. So we could actually take and draw new holes off there or convert those edges. So I'm going to actually convert them. I'm just going to click on that. There's one over here, hold control, select that, and there's one up here. So there's three on each side. There's one in the middle at the top. Technically, I suppose you could mirror these over. Actually, I make sure I don't get the wrong one here. So you should have six of them and then hit Convert Entities. What that will do, it will project those onto the surface that you're sketching. You can see them right there. And now go to Features, Extrude Cut. Select Link to Thickness, and hit the green check mark. And now we have the, the matched up screw holes. Now let's look at the underside here and add our hems. So down below here, you can now go to the Sheet Metal tool and find Hem. Now for the Hem here, we're going to go ahead and select this edge here. We'll see it wrap around. You have different options. You could go with Closed, or you could go with Teardrop or Roll. I'm going to go with the Teardrop. And this is in the event I actually build computers on my own. I don't want to cut my hand down the bottom. It's nice to have a nice rolled edge so it's nice and smooth. Okay, and we'll go with the 200 degrees. 
Okay, and so at this point, teardrop works really well. And you could go ahead and set it to 0.015 for the radius. Rotate this around and get the other side too. And you could hit apply. Alright, now to make a drawing of this, let's first of all um, save what we have and turn off edit component. And we'll open that up, open the E cover, E19 cover. And here it is. You could hide the plane just by clicking on it, going to the little eyeglasses there. And let's try flattening it out, see what it does. Here we can see in the flattened state, the bolt holes stay in their position. It looks good. Let's make a drawing for this. Now typically you can make a drawing or you could actually just export it to be cut out with uh, by the sheet metal fabricator by just going to uh, save it as a DXF. So I'm going to show you how to save it as a DXF just so it could be cut out either plasma or water jet or whatever you need to do. For this now we just go to file and go to make drawing from part. And we're going to go, uh, let's see, we go with A. E and C might be large enough, but then click on custom sheet. That's a 44 by 34 inch. And it's going to maintain that width and, and height. So with custom sheet, though, it removes the backdrop or the uh, any additional information, which maybe your sheet metal fabricator might not want. And so let's go ahead and hit OK. And now find the flat pattern and drag it in. Now we don't need to have all the views in here, just that one. And then right click on Sheet and Edit Sheet Format. Uh, I apologize, right click and click on Edit Sheet. Uh, we actually need to right click and, edit and go to Properties. And set this a one to one scale. And now you can drag it to the center. Now you do have the ability, maybe they want some dimensions to show up. So you could go here and select horizontal or vertical ordinate. So you can make your zero marker here and then every subsequent line entity just select even the whole positions. and the bend lines. Now we could export this. We could go to, uh, oh actually we could make layers too, so in the event that they want to get rid of those dimensions. I should have actually added layers first, but that's okay. I'm going to go to new and add a couple layers. So layer one, we'll make that blue. And actually, that will be used for our dimensions. And I'm going to hit OK here. And now, if I select the dimensions, we should be able to go over here under Options and find put them on a layer. And you'll find it under Other, and then select the layer one. Now you'll see they're all blue. And that might be helpful for the guy cutting this out. So now you could go to File, Save As, and save it as a DXF or DWG. DXF, hit Options, and you can save it for different versions for AutoCAD, like uh, 2010, 2009. You can have the fonts as AutoCAD Standard or True Type. And also um, custom map so that will export the uh, layers out. You can set that up specifically for this. Hit OK and hit Save. And now that's the X, that's the DXF file, and someone can use that to cut this out. That concludes this exercise.